Hebrews 12, this is what I said. And, and it just, you know, bear with me for a minute here because the word is rhema. For the spoken word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. Anybody walking out, you think I'm a heretic for saying this? The word of God, the Bible, that's how most of us would just look at this. Of course, it's alive. The book is breathing. It's speaking to you. It's always, you're always seeing something new in there. But what about this part? So the spoken word, the rhema of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Now, I'm just going to say, anytime you talk about the word in James, it says be careful about being a teacher because you're going to be held up to a higher standard. And sometimes you're tempted to make it say something that you want it to say, but it really doesn't say. Okay, so don't do that either. Because God really cares about the people in the pews. That, 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 who's ever up here is not confusing them. So I'm just asking you to think about this verse that you might have for so long. Yes, of course it's true that the word that we read convicts us, doesn't it? Right down to the, to the who we are part of our heart. And it opens us up and says, oh, no, that was wrong what I did. i got to go apologize to that person. I, I might not have meant it, but now that I'm reflecting back on it, I shouldn't have said that. That's what this means, I believe, piercing to the joints and marrow. But it could also be somebody who's not saved. They hear the word, and it pierces them, and they go, ah, oh, I need a Savior. Pray for me. I'm done. I'm done running, running away from God. I want to run towards God. Right? You think there's a few of them in New Jersey? Please say yes. <laughs> and here's an example. Mark 14, 72. Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said to him, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. Jesus said that. Jesus is the word. So the rhema was, yeah, Peter, I know you think you're going to die. But no, before the rooster crows twice, and Mark, it says this, you'll have denied me three times. No, I'll never deny you. Can you relate as a human being? The things that we want to do, we don't always get done. And then it says, when he thought about this, he wept. That's what it does. That's what this piercing does. It brings conviction in our heart. Like, I thought I knew who I was, but I really didn't. There's more layers of me under there than I realized. I'm not quite the hero I thought I was. That's not bad news. That's good news if you do something about it. That's why the word coming out of your mouth matters. Right? Get it from the right warehouse. The life warehouse, not the death warehouse. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Who's the angel talking to? Louder. All right, thank you. You know Mary was Jewish, right? Some people don't want to hear that one, man. Mary? She's Catholic. She can't be Jewish. <laughs> right? Help us. <laughs> I mean, I tell you, this Luke chapter 1, man, it's so powerful, right? Like, she, she didn't have any of the credentials that the world would, would look up to as someone who would still be talked about for good reason, right? She's an amazing person. I'm not saying pray to her, but let's not discount what she did, and she was willing to put her life on the line, right? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. This is Gabriel speaking to her a word of God, See, the word, the rhema, the spoken word is coming to her. And she says, and then he says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. And the way it's done in Greek is no thing. The thing there is rhema, meaning no word spoken by God is impossible because nothing is impossible for God. Now, right, now this could get into, well, how do I know it's God speaking? What if it's a false prophet? That's why you need discernment. That's why you need to be in a house that's teaching you how to do this and trying to develop your gifts. And nobody does it perfectly, but if, if we're trying, if we're men and women that are after God's heart in everything we do, it'll make you a better parent, a better employee, a better boss, a better everything you do. Because you'll recognize, right, like humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You're, you're not the big door prize you thought you were. There's still something else he can show you. And it's, it's the humble people that have the most impact. 
you know, because you can mix those two warehouses up pretty bad. You could be walking under the anointing and shift from one, hair, one warehouse to the other. Yeah, and that's why the gifts of God are without repentance, right? So the person that still has the gift but shifts to the wrong warehouse looks like they're under the anointing, but now they're using that anointing for their own good. And that causes wreckage when a man or woman of God goes off into the wrong direction. Just a trail of tears behind that. So when they say pray for your pastors, they're not kidding. Because <laughs> you're going to sit in that seat and listen. You better be hoping that me and Trisha are listening too. Or else you're going to get something that's from the wrong warehouse. <laughs> But look at this, because in verse 18 it says, Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, which we called unction when I was growing up as a Christian. I don't know about you. You know what that word means? Unction? Anybody? Okay. An anointing. I felt the unction on that word. And that's what she's doing. Like, it's spectacular news, but very hard to grasp for a teenage girl to think that God is going to impregnate her. This is not your normal day that you just go through. Like, God just shows up in the form of Gabriel and says, I'm going to be the mother of God in the earth. Like, I need a little time to process that one. But she did it. It says, behold, the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your rhema. That's the word, according to your word, according to the revelation that you brought from heaven. And I'm just trying to say, let's not make this harder than it has to be. He's a good father. Right? If your father was teaching you how to ride the bike, he's not yelling at you when you fall, hopefully. <laughs> if you are, come up for prayer if you're one of those people. <laughs> it's probably a root in there somewhere. Right? Like, no, a good father, the kid, you'll pick the kid up and you'll get him back and try it this way, try it that way. That's what God does. He wants to see that we're, that we're men and women after his heart, that we want to know the heart of God. And just that we're hungry and thirsty for righteousness, that person will be filled. But that fire will also be burning brighter as well. You know, recent men's ministry, that's one of the things. That, how do I keep from plateauing? How do I stay excited about reading the word? Well, keep coming to these men's studies. That will help. Do what David said. Get four other, five other people that you're going to be willing to be accountable to and hold each other accountable. And, and what's going on in your life? That's so powerful to have that in the body of Christ. So I'm going to just remind you that it said in James chapter 3, 1, I'm sorry, chapter, yeah, I think it is 3, 1. That's a, mis, that's a typo. Teachers are to be held to the strictest standards, right? So we're not taking this lightly when we're up here with a microphone in our hands or anybody that we bring in here, we're not taking this lightly that, that you can let your guard down and receive what they're telling you, like what Manny said about Robert Henderson, that, that it's going to have life in it. I'll leave it at that. 